Good morning, saints of God. Welcome to today's Seed Time and Harvest Broadcast. As always, we are blessed and privileged to have this opportunity to come and speak life to you again today. And we are excited about this week's message. So I want you to go ahead and get your Bible, paper, and pencils prepared so that you can take notes and study along with the saints. As you always hear me say to you, I want you to do this so that you can search the scriptures to see whether the things that we say are so or not. Praise the Lord. And so we also want to thank all of our students and congratulate all of our students in Grace Bible College and Seminary who are finishing your courses and those who are continuing to study. Continue to press toward the mark in that so we know that God has a special purpose for your life. Now our subject or title for today's message is Next Steps Moving Forward. Next Steps Moving Forward. And we're going to be looking at a portion of scripture from the book of Philippians. And for our foundational text, we're going to look at Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. This will be the foundational text that we're going to use for today's message entitled, Next Steps Moving Forward. We're going to be talking about how we can evaluate the will of God and follow the will of God. And so this is very relevant for every person who's listening to the sound of my voice. This is something that we all need to be in tune to. We all need to know what's next after the now. Each and every one of us are listening to this message. We're living in the now. But after this message, God is, has something next for us to do. And so we're going to understand what it means to follow up with things. We're going to understand what next means. We're going to understand what steps are. We're going to understand these things so that we can walk in the wisdom of obeying God's word. And so if you're going to be studying along with us again, we're going to go ahead and read now our foundational text from Philippians chapter 3, starting with verse 13, verse 12, that is, through verse 14. Verse 12 reads as such, Not as though I had already obtained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Verse 13, Brethren, I count it not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto the things which are before me, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Moving forward, next steps. Father, we thank you. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we ascribe worth, wisdom and honor, strength and might, it all belongs to you. We thank you for your living word today that is being read and being spoken into the hearing of your children. We pray that as they hear your word, as the word of God penetrate into their hearts, that it will bring about completion, that it will bring about hope and joy and inspiration in their lives. May it also render manifestation of healing for sick bodies. May it manifest in salvation for those who are lost and supernatural abundant provision for those who are in life today. And I thank you in advance that as we study these words, we'll understand more the next steps you have for us. We'll understand how to move forward into the things that you have for us, that you have already determined for us in advance. And we thank and praise you for that wisdom today. We thank you for that understanding, even now, in Jesus' master's name, hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. Praise the Lord. Next steps. That's what I want us to be talking about today, saints. This is the word of the Lord that God has given me for you today. And so I want you to repeat with me, next steps. Go ahead and say it right along with me. Next steps moving forward. So as we look at this text from the book of Philippians chapter 3, we see the Apostle Paul writing uh, his letter to the church in a city called Philippi. And we're going to read some of the context of this particular chapter so that we can understand why he's made the statements that he made. And I think that as we go through this week's lesson, each and every one of us, we're going to see ourselves in some of these texts. It may not be the exact situation. It may not be the exact circumstances that 
some of the other people were facing, but we'll find ourselves somewhere in the midst of this conversation. And that is why the Word of God is even relevant for us today, because if it was simply just a recount or a repetition of things that has happened in our past, it will have no relevance for our now, and it will have no relevance for our next. Somebody say next. So next is the thing that follow after something else. So after this message, hopefully you'll be prepared for what comes next in your life. And so as we begin this week's lesson, let us do what those of you who are familiar with this ministry know that I always enjoy doing is helping you to come to a more complete understanding of words and terminology that we use because if we don't understand the words that we use or the terminology or the meaning of them we will not fully gain the complete understanding and we will not be able to walk in wisdom and so the word next let's take a look at a working definition as it pertains to this week's lesson for the word next if you have a blank sheet of paper you can go ahead and write this down so that as we go through this lesson you will be able to understand what the apostle paul was meaning when he says that i have not apprehended it yet there's something that he was anticipating that were to come next let's look at verse 12 again he says not as though i had already attained it neither were already perfect but i follow after that i may apprehend that for which i am also apprehended of christ so he knew there's something next in my life in spite of everything that i've been through in spite of everything that i've accomplished there's something there's a next chapter of my life and i and i, I don't fully understand it now but i am seeking after it I'm desiring to know what it is God wants me to do now. What do you want? What direction he wants me to go? What places, what people, what things I should do and accomplish for him? And this is what the Apostle Paul is saying to the early believers after he had given a little bit of the background of where he had come from. So in verse 13, again, he says, My brethren, and I say to each and every one of you who are listening to me, my brethren and my sisters, as Paul says, I count not myself to have apprehended it, but this one thing I do. I forget those things which are behind, and I reach forward. Somebody said reach forward. I reach forward unto the things which are before me, and I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In other, other words, what the Apostle Paul is saying in these three texts as it relates to our message today is that there are some next steps that I must take in order to move forward. And you see the terminology that Paul used. He says, I do not count myself as already have apprehended it, but he says, I forget the things that are behind me so in order to forget what's behind you, you must move forward past those things. So he says, I reach forth or I reach forward now. In the context of our lesson title today, we're saying that we want to move forward. We want to move forward unto the things which are before us. And so therefore, the apostle says he pressed toward the mark. He strived. He has it as his goal or his aim to reach a certain mark or goal or prize and in this case he identified that prize as the high calling of God in Christ Jesus so saints of God let me ask you what is it that you're pressing toward in life is it the things that God has designed and purpose for you or is it your own goals or your own dreams your own visions in the case of the apostle as we read today he wasn't pressing toward anything that would bring any glory to himself. He wasn't pressing or had as his goal or set as his aim anything that would exalt him in this earth. His sole purpose and desire was to reach the prize, to achieve or to receive that prize. And I want you to know, saints of God, there's a prize for each and every one of us who seek after God. So we need to understand the next steps 
the next steps beyond where we are right now today, the next steps beyond where we've been in our past, so that we can forget the things that are behind us and we can press forward to the things that are before us. How many of you know God still has great designs and plans and purposes for your future? I think about the text in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 where it reads, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to give you a future hope and good success. Someone say with me, next steps moving forward. And so here's a working definition for the word next. You can write this down. Next, by definition, means immediately following in time, order, or importance. For instance, the next day, the next person in line, the nearest thing you're going to come to. This is what, it mean, this is what the working definition of next means. So what is the thing that is going to immediately follow you listening to this message? What's going to be the next thing? What's going to be what comes immediately? This is what I say. Next means it happens immediately. It comes immediately after a certain time. It comes immediately after a certain season in your life. It's coming immediately after the present order of things. So the fact that you're listening to this broadcast today is something that God has positioned you for your next moment in life, for your next victory, for your next breakthrough, for your next uh, uh, revelation from God, for that next step forward so that you can get closer to receiving that prize, which I pray that you have made your aim or that you will make your aim as the prize of being the high calling of God which is Christ Jesus our Lord for in Christ we have all things and for by him all things were made and by him all things exist that exist saints of God so the apostle understood that and I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit today that each and every one of us will come to a much more complete understanding revelation and inspiration on that same issue next steps so we see that the word next means coming immediately after. If we look at steps as a definition, steps are things that we place in motion. Sometimes we say we take the first step before we can make the next step. And this is exactly what the apostle is saying here, that first I must apprehend that is, I must understand what it is God has for me next. I must evaluate God's will, and then I must be prepared to follow God's will. So you see the steps that the apostle says he must take, and I believe that each and every one of us must take as well, is first we must apprehend. In other words, first we must understand what is the will of God for my life, so that I can then press toward that goal or so that I can achieve that goal, or I can reach that mark. So if you're taking notes, the next step, immediately following this broadcast, or even while you're listening to it, is to understand God's will for your life. Understand God's will for my life. You may want to say that to yourself right now. So God, help me to understand your will, your goals, and your purposes for my life. So this is what the apostle is saying in this text to the church in Philippi. This is what this message, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, is communicating to each and every one of us. So we see next is something that follows immediately after something else. After a certain time or after a certain season. I don't know what the times and seasons are in your life, but regardless of whatever time or season you're in, there's going to be a ne another time, there's going to be another season. In other words, there's going to be a season that comes after this season. There will be a time that comes after this time, and that's regardless of whatever you're going through. So you need to understand what's next. And so again, 
first step in understanding what's next is asking God to reveal to you, help you to understand his purpose and goal and plans for your life. So we looked at the first two words of our lesson plan today. Next, and we looked at steps. Our subtopic is moving forward. So the key word, in order to take steps, you have to move, or you have to be in motion, or there must be some movement. In other words, there must be something that you must be equipped and empowered to act upon. Now, a lot of us want to sit back and we just hear the words next, and, 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 and we want to say, just say next. We want God to do something in our lives, but I want to give you a little secret here today, saints of God. When we say next, it is not what God is going to do next. It is what he's expecting you to do next. We look at the case of Gideon back in the Old Testament book of the Judges where he tested God by throwing out the fleece. But after God showed him what it was that he was indeed God and that God had the power to manifest uh, answer to his request about making the fleece wet and the dr ground dry and vice versa. But after God revealed himself to Gideon in such a way, there was something that God was going to require that Gideon did next. And the thing that God required Gideon to do in the case of the accounting judges was to go against their enemies, to confront their enemies. In other words, he had to take the next step after God revealed himself. Saints, this is a key. This is the key to your victory. This is the key to your overcoming. This is the key to your breakthrough. If you don't understand the next steps that God requires of you, you still stay in your now moment. Now, if your now is a good place, and, and that's fine. If your now is a bad place, then don't worry. There's something going to come next. So whether you're in a good season or a bad season, seasons change. Times change. Things change. Circumstances change. Situations change. So whether you ready for it or not, a new season is coming. You're going to go through different times in, in your life. And so it comes immediately after something else. So it's a very pertinent and relevant for each of us to understand what's next, God. What's next, no matter what my situation is, I want to learn to be content in whatever state I am. And that's why I believe that God is speaking this message today to prepare somebody for that next moment in their life. What's the next steps? What is it I need to understand? What is it I need to do? What is it I need to be prepared for? And so, as we move past our now or our present season or our present time, we must learn to move forward, as the apostle says. I, whatever things you may lose in the course of knowing Christ, you can count it as loss so that you can gain something greater. This is to understand that the apostle had, and we all need to understand this because no matter how sweet or grand our life may be, also no matter how bad and depressed it may seem to be, there's something greater and better for all of us. And that's what the apostle was pressing. says, I press toward the mark, for there is a prize that comes with the high calling of God, and that is found in Christ Jesus. So let's back up a little bit in this text, Philippians 3. And we're going to talk a little bit after we read this context about what it is to move forward. How we can be uh, going in the right direction. Remember, we're talking about moving forward, not going backward. So when you go forward, you're going toward things that are in front of you. As the apostle says, I press toward those things that are before me, that are, that are in front of me. So whenever you're moving forward, you won't encounter the same old things again. Somebody ought to say hallelujah right there. As you move forward, saints, you won't encounter the things in your past because those things are behind you. Somebody need to get this because many people today are trying, are saying that God, I want to move forward, but you're still dealing with the things that are behind you. And so this lesson will be very good for you to be able to understand today what it means to press forward or press toward the mark and leave those things behind you and move forward. So as we back up in this particular text of scripture, 
Philippians chapter 3 we're looking at, we, we, we establish our foundational text as verses 12 through 14. But let's back up to verse 1 because I always want you to be able to understand things in the proper context. So again, Paul was writing a letter to the church in Philippi and he had ended his what we call chapter 2 by giving the saints an exhortation. And then he wanted to continue his exhortation to them and he started in verse 1 by saying, in addition to all that I have said to you before, verse 1 starts by saying, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. He says, to write the same things to you, to me, indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. And here are some of the things he warned them against. He says, verse 2, be aware of dogs, be aware of evil workers, beware of the concision or things that divide us, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh. Verse 4, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, he says, I would be qualified to think so as well. And then in verse 5, he gives some of the reasons why he may have been tempted or could be deceived into being puffed up by his own achievements, by his own accomplishments, by his own background. In verse 5, he says, I could boast in the flesh because I was circumcised, verse 5, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. I was of the tribe of Benjamin. I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law, I was a Pharisee. Verse 6, he continues. These are some of the things that the apostle says, I could boast in in my flesh. Verse 6, concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. Touching righteousness, which is the law, I was blameless. But then verse 7, he says, there's something greater in store for me. Why would I rest on what I think I have achieved through my own effort, through my own education, through my own gaining of success as compared to what Christ has in store for me. So we see a shift here in verse number 7. And each and every one of us may have things in our past that we have accomplished that we are proud of. We may have come from a certain type of family, a certain type of background, and there's nothing wrong with appreciating and being thankful for those things. But we cannot and we should not count those things as the success that God necessarily has for us. So after laying out some warnings to the early believers about things that could deceive them, things that could trick them, then he says, have no confidence in your flesh. Do not take confidence in what you have done, what you can accomplish, what, how smart you think you are, how rich and well off you think you are, how healthy you think you are because seasons change, times change, things to God. Somebody said next steps moving forward. So here again, after they see the apostle lay out all the types of things he could boast of, and after warning the early believers to guard themselves against evil workers, he says, but what things, verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. All of my accomplishments, all of my achievements, all the great things that I had done, I ask in comparison to the things that Christ has revealed to me, I count them as nothing, as dung, as lost, things that I should gladly forsake for a greater prize. This is what the apostle is saying here in verse 7. So we, I pray that each and every one of us, and that's regardless of how great and mighty and wonderful we think we are in life or what type of title or prestige you have or how low you think you are. Seasons change. So what's next? We must move forward is what we're talking to you about today. So here the apostle is saying, I've outlined all the things in my past. Things that I had accomplished, privileges that I have received, types of positions that I have held, but what things were gained to me that was only for my own glory and for my own esteem, 
Those I counted lost for Christ. And he says in verse 8, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I do not count them but dumb or waste that I may win Christ. He said, I know what God's plan and what God's purpose is for me now. So as I look at those things, I don't sorrow over those things. I count them as loss for the excellency. Somebody give God praise. I count all those things as loss for the excellency, excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all those former things. So I do not count them but dung that I may win Christ. He continues in verse 9. And I also press toward this mark before my life. See, when you understand where the apostle is here when you get away from trying to do things on your own when you get away from trying to uh, uh, build your own life up exalting yourself god will humble us through situations and circumstances sometimes says of god if you haven't already reached that place you, you better be prepared because seasons change and that's no matter no matter how good your season is or how bad your season is seasons change so next steps Moving forward is what we want you to be able to focus on, regardless of what season you're in or what season you're transitioning into. So again, we look again at the Philippians letter that Paul wrote to these early believers. He says, I count everything that I had placed pride and prestige on, but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ for whom he had suffered all things. He count them as dumb that he may win Christ. Verse 9, and be found in him not having my own righteousness. Do you see what we're talking about? Not having his own right standard or his own standard of what it means to be successful. His own standard or the world standard. He's not measuring himself according to those things that the world formerly measured him against. He doesn't concern himself about being a part of a special group or having a certain type of things or having certain types of titles and prestige and friends. He says, look, this is not my own righteousness, which is simply of the laws that we had interpreted for ourselves. But he says, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith is now what I seek after. This is why I take the next steps past where I was in my understanding. I take the next step past where I was in my belief system. I'm taking the next step past where I was in my understanding, saints of God. He says, unless I take these next steps, I will never fully understand what it is God has for me. So he says, I'm no longer seeking after my own righteousness, which is through the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And the reason why he says, I now seek after these things, and the reason why I pray that each and every one of you begin to take a different direction if you haven't already done so, it is because your season will change, saints of God. Somebody said next steps moving forward. Your seasons will change in life. Just as the Apostle Paul went through a season of change and immediately following that time or season in his life, which is what next means, he had to move forward. He had to take some other actions. He had to go in a different direction. There were things that he needed to do differently than what he had done before. But he needed to be different in order to do things different. That's what needs to happen in each of our lives. In order for things to become different in our lives, we must also become different. We must be changed and transformed, renewed, as Paul said in another letter, by the, trans tra by the renewing, transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we must move forward. So after verse 9, we see in verse 10, he says, these are the things that I now want to understand. These are the things that now I see that are really important for me. These are the things that now are most important for me, as opposed to all the other former things that I enjoyed, being circumcised, and being of the stock of Israel, being of the tribe of Benjamin, being a Hebrew of the Hebrews and a Pharisee. I, I count all of that as lost 
that I may understand what plan and purpose God has for me. And he identified what he's now seeking out. So he says, verse 10, my goal, my aim, the prize that I am now seeking after is that I may know him, which is Christ, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. That I may reach the highest place of being conformed to the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the only perfect and righteous one. Verse 11, he said, if by any means I may obtain unto the resurrection of the dead, just as he rose from the dead, I press toward the mark to that part where I will receive the prize of having eternal life run along with him. Not a life that will end in spite of all my accolades and rewards and, and achievements in life. I will still lose it all through death. So I realize, thanks to God, the apostle said, that there is something greater for me in this life. There is something greater for me beyond this life. And I'm pressing toward that mark is what the apostle was saying. How about you, saints of God? How, where is your future? What's next for you beyond this life? What's next beyond the new mate, the new car, the new job? What is it? What's going to be your eternal prize that you hope to receive one day? Well, we see here the Apostle Paul realized that, look, I've had a great life, but there's a greater life that awaits me. So he says, I want to attain unto the resurrection of the dead in verse 11. And then we get to our foundational text that we started with. He says, not as though I have already obtained it because I'm still with you. Not because I'm already perfect, but I, but I strive to be so. I follow after it. If that I may apprehend, that I may understand, may, that I may know God's perfect plan for my life, that purpose for which I am also called to be with Christ Jesus. May, let me understand my purpose so that I can now take the next steps to move forward in life. This is what each and every one of us, I pray, saints, I pray this is your desire as well. As a child of the living God, I pray that your desire is to know him. Hallelujah, as the Apostle Paul says, not to be known by others. It's okay if God blesses you and makes you known by others, but that should not be your aim, your sole desire in life. But your sole desire, as the apostle says, is to know him and to be known of him. And I want to apprehend. I want to understand these things. So he says in verse 13, Brother, and I count not myself to have apprehended or understood these things at the present. But this one thing I do, which is the next steps. These are the steps I take. He says, first thing I do is to forget those things which are behind me. Some of you, that need to be your first step if you're still in bondage, guilt, or shame. Forget those things which are behind you. Second, reach forward or move forward unto the things which are before you. Hallelujah. And in order to do that, in verse 14, he concluded that I must press, I must strive, I may have to overcome, I must persevere against the urge of the things that seem to want to pull me back so that I can reach toward I got to move forward, thanks to God. Each and every one of us need to move forward because the prize is in front of us. The prize is not behind us. Move forward so that you can receive the goal. You can reach the mark or achieve that which God has called you for. He says, now, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Thanks to God today, what direction do you need to go in? If you don't know, you need to seek God. Movement means going in motion. Moving forward in the case of this text. Move forward. Forward means to go toward the things that you are facing. So some of you might need to repent. Repent means to turn around and go in a different direction. So that you can face a different direction. So that you won't be looking at your failures. So that you won't be looking at your fears. So that you won't be looking at your doubts. But now you can look at the promise, the vision, and the hope that Christ has for you. I pray today, say to God, that this lesson, this message that you meditate upon it, will help you to understand and seek God for the next steps in your life. So that you also can move forward toward that prize, toward that mark, for that goal 
that plan and purpose for which God has called you into Christ. So, Father, now we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory and honor. We thank you for the next steps that you're going to reveal to us. We thank you for the power to move forward into that purpose, into that vision, into that plan that you have for us. And we trust you. And we thank you that you will accompany us on this journey. By your Holy Spirit, O oh God, we shall receive victory and success through Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us know our next steps so that we can move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. As I stumble underneath the load of sin The questions to the answers never end And can I ever find the peace within But you've loved me through it all time I of how your love has rescued me on a lonely cross you died to set me free oh and looking back it isn't hard to see how your loving arms have always carried me and Lord you
you guide me by your plans. Please carry me, Jesus.